A special thank you to our main sponsor of the channel, Squarespace. More on that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Keely Ellen and welcome to this week's video. I am back off my holiday, I'm feeling refreshed, I'm feeling great and what I wanted to do was update you on the plants I've chosen for my house and you're probably thinking, oh my god, that was ages ago, do you still not have anything in your house? The answer is no, I think I have one spathophyllum in my house and that's about it. But something has happened recently, my life has changed course just a tiny little bit and that's actually affected the plants that I can have in my house. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about these beautiful little boys. I'm bringing these home near the end of May. So I have some time before they get here and I'm kind of pleased I haven't put plants in the house because I'd have to take them all out anyway, right? So this has kind of been a blessing in disguise. So what I've had to do is I've had to go online, find plants that are actually safe for these two little boys and work from there. So what I want to take you through today is a list of plants that I'm probably putting in the house, except it's actually for real this time. And I do aim to try and get to the Netherlands if I can, it's not for certain, but I'd like to go and pick some of these up and bring them home, just because I think I'll have a better shot out there, just in getting like the sizes and stuff like that that I want and everything else. I have three sections, plants I'd like to have in the house, the maybe pile, so it's things I'm not really sure on, and non-pet friendly plants that I would probably like to stick in there down the line so they're actually toxic to cats and dogs i think but i have i know a lot of people with cats basically and i'm sure a lot of you at home have cats or dogs and they don't touch your plants so it's fine you know they don't chew on them so later down the line i could probably add some stuff in but for now this is probably what's going in the house and if anything else random goes in the house it's because i've looked it up at the time while i'm in a shop shall we just get started the first plant that i would like is a plant that i i had two of in here and i popped them in the living wall in the documentary you may remember you may not and it, it just hated it hated being in here it didn't like it i think it was too low light for it i'm not really sure but it's one of my favorite plants great way to add a bit of color into your plant collection just looks great not too difficult to take care of Mwah, awesome and of course it is cat safe so the first plant is the blue star fern which i can't remember the actual name i haven't got it written down i've never called it anything other than a blue star fern but i imagine it's a type of microsorum i think any microsorum is fine to have by the way if you're into your pet stuff and i will do a video on this later down the line there's not a lot to say about this other than it's blue it's amazing i think it'll look great i would love a nice bit of frosting especially maybe in my kitchen or something like that i think it would look really good i need to provide a photograph of my kitchen at some point i might have one i might not just of what it looks like and what we're working with but I have an, an okay size kitchen and I have some skylights. So I have a lot of light, so I don't think light's going to be the problem for any of these plants, to be honest. So we'll see how that goes. But I would love to add that to the house somewhere. Right, I've mentioned this before. This was on my original list. But of course, my Maranta will be coming with me to the house. They are pet safe and I can't wait to bring them. I have four different types, actually. I might not bring all four. I'm not sure. I would love to bring my lemon lime because it's upstairs right now and it looks incredible. I would love to bring a silver band. I have to bring Gus, the original, right? He has to. I might bring the no ID unless it has a name now i don't know but those are the three plants that i would absolutely love to bring over i think they're great i think they're really interactive if you don't know what they do they actually come up and down like this in prayer so at night the leaves do this and during the day they open up because a lot of people think during the day that the plant is wilting the amount of people i've had say to me hey i bought this prayer plant but it's wilting during the day what have i done wrong i've watered it i've watered it literally it's normal it's what they do and it is amazing if i can find a time lapse i will pop one in here just to show you what they do so i will use one from instagram most likely because i don't have one myself but that is what they do over the course of the day so if you want to buy one please do not be alarmed when you buy one but yeah if you're interested in these plants there are so many different colors i think they're all affordable now literally we have the lemon lime in the uk we have the maranta silver band in the uk we have obviously the original in the uk the one with the red veins we got it all i think the only one we don't have is the no id but even then i've seen it in some shops so you can probably get them all so it's a really really good plant the next plant i i wish i still had mine so i used to have two of these in the front of the shop and they just they just died they just died they they didn't get watered much i'll be honest they didn't get watered much and it took a long time for them to die because these plants are very tough but they died all the same so i really really want one of these for the house i knew i wanted something big tall and jungly and leafy so i've gone for the kentia palm because yes it is pet safe and i can't imagine the two little boys chewing on that at all 
at all. I think that'll be quite safe. I don't know which corner I'm going to put it in yet because I actually have a cat tree that I bought and I put it near my patio doors. So I feel like it's going to have to be in the other corner. But given that I've got skylights, I, I think it'll be fine. I'll just have to rotate it every now and again. But I'd like to do that because it's something nice. It's big. It's luscious. It's green. It's leafy. It'll just give some height to the whole thing. I just love Kentia palms. You can get them anywhere, by the way. You really can. Sizing might differ. So I will want one of those and I will want the biggest thing I can fit in the car <laughs> if I go to the Netherlands or the biggest thing I can find. I really, really do. That's definitely something I'm looking for 100%. Oh, the next one, right, this next plant, I've wanted for a long time, you know. And I, when I say a long time, I mean a long time. And honestly, they have not had this plant in the UK much at all. And I don't mean recently, I mean historically, right? So when I was first getting into plants and I was on my low light plant mission, like I'm sure all of us have been on, literally, I'd be surprised if there's somebody watching one of these videos that hadn't done that at some point in their plant hunting sort of life cycle. But I was hunting for some low light plants and you come across all the typical offenders. And in amongst that list, we had the cast iron plant. I didn't know this, but there's a couple of different types. And you know what? I'm probably going to collect them. Now, I really like the shape of these because they're not overly bushy. They're a little bit tall. So you could probably mount one in like a mid-century planter or something like that. Just raise it from the floor a bit, give it a little bit of something, something. And I think it'll look really good. Now, I love the all green. Totally going to get one of those. Totally going to get one of those. Maybe even two. I have seen, I can't remember what it was called. Did I write it down? Nope, I didn't. But it has lime tips on the top. That's really quite nice. Is it a something sunrise or something? But I will try and find a picture of that as well to show you. And I would love a variegated one. Absolutely love a variegated one uh, with white variegation. So at some point, I'm going to hunt for those. And I will highly likely have those around the house because there's something about that plant I really, really like the look of. I know it's really simplistic, but that's kind of what I'm going for in the house. My house is very, very small, guys, so I can't necessarily have things that take up a stupid amount of floor space. So the taller and slimmer they are, the better. And if I've got bushy things, I would just use them to be around the base of something tall and thin. So I think they would be really good and you can get them at different heights. I've already checked, so I can sort of play around with that a little bit. And of course, it's cat safe. So we're good there. Ah, oh, the next plant, right. The next plant, I like this plant because I feel like even if you're into aroids, you, you can sort of get away with this plant a little bit. It's not overly Calathea-ish. I know, I know what you're thinking. The Calathea orbifolia, guys, is a lovely, lovely plant. It looks very, very jungly. Do you know what I mean? I honestly think if you put that in with a Monstera deliciosa and stuff like that, it would fit. I genuinely think it's a really nice way to add something totally different to your plant collection. And especially since it's more at floor height and something that a pet could definitely chew on, it's quite decent. Do we want our pets to chew on anything? No. Am I hoping that nothing gets chewed? Yes, because it's going to look a state. But it is what it is. They're kittens at the end of the day. Galathea orbifolia. I used to have one of these and I was so in love with it. I had a lot of problems with it, but I think I just didn't get off to a good start with it. It was one of my first Galathea and I, I'll be honest, I wouldn't say it was the easiest at all. It's definitely more widely sold now, which is a good sign, but I wouldn't say it was the easiest of all of them. I've definitely had easier ones, but I do think it'll blend really nicely. That's not to say, by the way, that this is the only Calathea I'll probably get. Is it the only one on here? No, I've got the White Star on here as well because it's one of my favorites. Everyone knows that. It's so delicate. It's more tall. It's a little bit more demure, a little bit more elegant. I would love one of those as well, but honestly, I will probably have a huge Calathea collection. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. And I'm quite happy about it. I'm really happy about it. These kittens have been a blessing for me because it means I can start dipping my toe back into the plants that I used to love. And that's not to say that I've stopped loving them. I just haven't really had the opportunity to have them just due to me getting into aroids and the way this shop is and everything else. I'm not stocking Calathea. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's really cool that Calathea just happened to be one of few houseplants that are safe for pets. And they're also my like, second favorite houseplant. Really, they're probably tied first. So I'm actually really, really, really looking forward to having Calathea again. So I have on my list the Orbifolia. I have on my list, obviously, the White Star. But there may be some other ones creeping in. We don't know. We don't know. We will see how it goes. I'll see what I find at the time. The Orbifolia, yes, definitely. Definitely because it's one of my favorites and I'm pretty sure I can look after it better this time around. When did I have that thing? Like 20, 2017, maybe 2018. Yeah, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> I've looked after much worse, put it that way.
If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. If you don't quite know where to start, you can always use the inbuilt wizard which will guide you towards the recommended templates for the kind of website you would like to make. Once you have your selected template, follow the instructions on screen and you'll be set up in no time. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you very much, Squarespace. And back to the video. The next thing, and this one, I'm just going to take the one I have upstairs back with me. I'm going to repot it at some point. I will either do that on camera or off camera. I'm not sure because it'd be very, very difficult and it'd be hard to set up. But my and the Trio Star, what a beauty it is. Now, it's huge, the one up there that I have. I probably have a photograph of it and it won't be a recent one, but it's got a lot bigger than that, to be honest. It's a little bit... It's, it's out there, I need to charge it rent, you feel me? But I want to take that, it's had a little bit of a beating previously. So I wanna take it, trim it up, maybe separate out some of the bunches and have two, not really sure. Not because I want two plants in the house, just because it's quite large. So we'll see how it goes. I need to really assess what's going on. But either way, she will definitely be coming to the house. Definitely, definitely. I've gone on about this plant for ages and it was just one of my prized possessions. I've had the one that's upstairs since 2020, so that's three years now, and that one will be fine to come home. So I'm just gonna take her. She is quite big though. I might need something a little bit smaller, but we'll just, we'll just divide her up. Right, the next plant, I also used to have one of these. It was tiny though, it was so tiny. And again, I think I could just look after it a bit better. I can't remember what happened to it. Did it get spider mites? I think it got to a point where I just started the shop and I wasn't at home much. I was home like a week on, a week off. And you can't really leave your plants a week on, week off without them starting to look really bad. And I mean really bad. And one of the things that just went was the crocodile fern that I had. Now, I love this crocodile fern. I think it's brilliant. I absolutely love them. They aren't as ferny as you might think. Does that make sense? They are a lot easier to look after because the leaves are just a bit thicker and a bit more resilient. And of course, they have a pattern that looks like crocodile scales. So they're really, really nice. I would love one of them and I would probably go quite small with this. Maybe something for a windowsill. I don't want like a big beast. I'd rather have that maybe as like the blue star fern. Maybe that would be better. But I think if I get one of these, it's going to be smaller. Maybe it might sit on a bathroom windowsill or something like that. It's not going to be something that's crazy. I just want it. I just want it diddy, you know? Right, so those are the definites. I say definite, obviously pending me finding them, but those are the definites I'm probably going to put in the house. Most of them will be in the kitchen. Some will be in the living room, like the cast irons and stuff like that. And maybe some of the little stuff will go on windowsills. So that's what we're starting with. The maybe piles, my first maybe is a plant I've always wanted to have. I just know, I just know they're a bitch to take care of, guys. I just know it, I just know it. I think unless you are one with the fern, you're probably gonna struggle with it. I know it's not a Boston. I've just seen too many Bostons. I do love them, but they are, they're not a headache I want. I'm actually talking about the maidenhair fern. I think that is a beautiful, beautiful plant. And I am probably the kind of person who put it in a pot with a face on it. I think I could be that person quite easily. So I would like one of them, but um, I, again, I probably wouldn't buy a large one. It'd be something small, something that I'm not putting a ton of money into it. And if I go away one day, or I leave it on the wrong windowsill and it gets sunny, it just goes, do you know what I mean? I will put it somewhere where I think it can survive just fine but I don't know. That is in my maybe pile for that reason, just because I know they're very brittle. It's nothing like the other two ferns I've picked. Maybe it might be fine. Maybe it might die on week one. You decide. The next plant, no one's going to expect this. Honestly, no one's going to expect this. But I have done a rare plant index so long ago now, so long ago. It was one of my first ones, I think. And I remember really liking this plant, really liking this plant. I'm debating trying it. I'm debating trying it. Again, it would be a smaller plant. Maybe it would live on my kitchen countertop. I don't know. I feel like it's going to be easy care. I feel like it's going to be slow growing. And I think therefore it could be a nice candidate for me. What am I talking about? I'm talking about, let me make sure I got the name right, the Peperomia 
columella. I will obviously pop a picture up for you. For a peperomia, you wouldn't think it was. I don't think you'd think it was. It looks really weird. And I feel like, why not have something a bit weird? Why not? So that is another one that I would like. If anyone remembers, I'm sure as hell it will have happened in my rare plant index where I did peperomia. I probably talked about it quite favorably because I think I saw it a long time ago. And again, that's another one where you put it in a pot with a head on it. I'm all for it, guys. I'm all for it. I'm not above that. I'm not above that at all. So I'd probably try and do that as well. Just depends where I want to put it. My kitchen is my lightest room in the house, guys. It has got the most light. It floods. The rest of the house, not so much. Not so much at all. Plus, I don't think I'm going to create a higher humidity environment really anywhere else in the house. The best things are going to be in the kitchen, so we'll see. I am going to follow that with another potential peperomia though. And it is a peperomia I have owned before. And I'm pretty sure I've only ever owned maybe two. So if you can't guess what that might be, it's essentially the classic. It's something you'd probably want in a kitchen, actually. I think it would suit really, really, really nicely on my countertop. And that would be a peperomia watermelon. Now these are just, honestly, they're just mint. They're just mint, they look so cute. And I really, really liked mine when I had it. I just struggled with it from day one. My whole flat back then, like, literally guys way back then when i started my channel my flat was so dark it was so dark it couldn't handle it i think that's why i progressed from like calathea just down the aroid side because there's so many other plants that i liked like i had like ficus elastica and things like that i loved those i thought they were great i still love them still love them i think i just progressed that way because i had low light now i've got high light and i would call it that for sure my kitchen no doubt about it is high light <laughs> high light and that is now in winter so in summer probably have to put some blinds up to be honest otherwise i'm going to torch everything but i'm thinking about that now the last thing i want to go over really really quickly are plants that i would love to have in the house they are toxic to cats and dogs i do believe but if my kittens behave themselves and they grow so maybe in like a year or two's time or something like that they just behave themselves they don't chew my plants they're not bothered these are some of the additions i would like to make into the house where i would put them i have no idea but these are just plants i would like in the house you feel me i'll make room I'll make room. Right. Obviously, my plan has not changed. Obviously, I would still love to have a Monstera Deliciosa. I'm still not decided, by the way, on regular Monstera Deliciosa that I'm looking at just there, or a big tie or anything. I'm not really decided. I think both would look good. I've decided maybe white variegation would look best, and I think that should be the case throughout the kitchen, just because it's white. The countertops are white. My kitchen is dove gray. Everything is white. So I think I am going to stick with white variegation. So I don't know. I will either go all green, or I will probably go tie. But I would like a large form i think i think that's something i'm quite set on i don't really want a regular form i don't think so that's something i'm definitely 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 thinking about but again just depends on what the little boys do maybe they'll chew maybe they won't the breed of these cats by the way is a british short hair cat i'm not saying anything about them because i'll probably do another video when i get them obviously and i will tell you their names because they're already picked out and i will let you meet them and everything else so that's the only reason i'm not saying anything yet plus they're a month away a long time away but the breed itself is known for being very chill and highly trainable and all the rest so i have high hopes but again we have to keep the kitties safe until we know that they're good next plant oh my god this is just this whole list guys is just me going back to my roots my original roots before i got into aroids it's just magical and i'm so happy that that's worked out trust me because I have my aroids here. I never get to have the other things. And this is just so cool that I can have them. But another plant that I'm thinking about putting in, if I can, is a giant alocasia. <laughs> These are literally the plants I used to have. Now, what alocasia, you ask? I honestly haven't got a clue. I have not got a clue. I still like a good old Caladora. That's what I had originally. That was Big Al. If anyone remembers Big Al. Um, what else? I mean, there's loads of variegated stuff in here. Obviously, it's tiny at the minute, but there's lots of different things. I could probably use one of those. I don't really know. I'm happy to have it all green. I don't really mind. You guys know this about me. I don't, I don't live for variegation. I'm quite fine to not have it. I really don't mind, but we will see. We will see. I haven't written this down, but it's just reminded me. I might probably try and find a way of getting a Philodendron Gloriosum in there. Why not? Why not? It's a nice crawler, so it might it might have my life a little bit because I bet it grows like wildfire in there. But I do want some kind of crawler. So if I didn't, just look at my crawlers down there. Mm, I have some nice Plowmanii down there. And I have that silver hybrid as well. Maybe something like that could go in there. I also have ZZ Raven. I really want a ZZ Raven. I, I can't even tell you why. I can't even tell you why. I just want one. 
I just want one. I've always wanted one actually. And it would go with the house because my house is, it's quite modern organic type thing. So there's a lot of natural woods. There is whites and there is tiny pops of black. And I just think it would go really beautifully. But again, it is toxic. So I can't have it yet. But again, if the, if the cats behave themselves and they don't like to chew on things, and they don't care, absolutely we'll probably bring it in no problem at all. We also have another plant that I used to have, guys. Another plant I used to have. Now, I don't know what type I would get. I would probably just match it to the room. Probably not the one with uh, yellow margins on it. But I would love a Sansevieria plant because you can get so many different types, so many different sizes. They just live Let's be honest, they just live. They don't need to be in a super bright spot at all. And I will find plenty of places that get light, but they don't get, you know, a stupid amount. And they will just be absolutely fine because I can see what my house is like at the moment in the worst of it, which is winter. So I already know that in summer, it's going to be fine. So at some point, I would love to put some of those in. Do I know where? No, absolutely not. I might have to put one in a bedroom just to pay homage to the snake plants I used to have in my bedroom. I've not stopped loving those plants, guys. I really haven't. It's just, life has just not gone that way where I could have those plants. But now it is, you know. Honestly, I've never stopped loving any of these plants. If anyone wants to know, I've never stopped loving them. I've never stopped loving them. I really, really do. I think they're great plants. There's a reason why, you know, you can find them anywhere in garden centers, because they're good. They're good. They work in our homes. They're very, very tolerant and all the rest. So I think everything on this list should be achievable to find. Now, I can probably find them in the UK plant shops. It's just dependent on size. It really just depends if I can get over to the Netherlands to get the sizes that I would like. But we will see. If I do go to the Netherlands, I'm sure I will take you with me. Let's be honest. I'm sure I will take you with me and do a little vlog or something like that, because why not? Why not? I think we're going to try and do it in one day if we do do it. So it's not necessarily going to be all the, the non-planty vlog stuff. It will literally just be plant shopping in the Netherlands. But still fun, right? So I'll let you know how that goes. I will totally keep you updated, even if it's just on my Instagram stories or whatever. So feel free to follow me on my socials. I will have socials for the cats eventually when they come. And if you're interested, I will make a video introducing them to you. I might not put it on this channel. I might just put it on my second channel. I don't know if it's appropriate to put it on this channel. Let me know what you think about that and I will make a decision on that. So thank you for watching this video. I hope that my decisions make sense to you. Let me know if there's anything else that is pet safe that you think that I would really enjoy because I do have high light now. Do let me know. Let me know your favorite Calathea if you think I should get some more of those because it's obviously happening. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps. It lets me know that I'm making content that you enjoy. And if you haven't already subscribed because literally so many of you have not, you may not even realize, but please feel free to hit that subscribe button. That's it for this week's video, guys. And I will see you undoubtedly in the next one.